Hello there, wonderful people of the internet. Today I'm going to be talking to you a wee bit about the Akai S6000, which is one of the last true great rack mount hardware samplers of its era. It came out in 1998 or 1999 or something like that, and it's got a whole host of really interesting features that are worth consideration. So in this video I'm going to talk a wee bit about some of those, and I'm also going to explain to you why I decided to buy this particular sampler, uh, paying something like 560 Great British Pounds just a week or two ago. Now the first question that everybody seems to ask whenever you tell them that you've bought a hardware sampler in the age of laptops and VSTs and you know digital technology in general is why on earth would you do that? Why would you buy a hardware sampler in 2023? Are they not completely redundant? Uh, why don't you just use a sample library on your computer? It's so much easier. And the answer to that is something that I've kind of covered in other videos. However, for me, it kind of boils down to a few different things. First of all, hardware samplers look cool as fuck. Not only do they look cool as fuck, but they are fun as fuck to use. There's something really interesting about them. There's something exciting for me about using old technology, particularly technology that you can be hands-on and tactile with and so if I ever have the choice between sitting down on my laptop on the couch and loading up Logic Pro and loading up samples into a box or whatever or using an old fucking computer that I have to spend time with and really get to know then I'm going to pick the big unwieldy computer anytime because it encourages me to be creative. When I sit with a DAW it doesn't really do that for me. I don't feel inspired and if you're different that's fine that's great however that is one of the big reasons that people People use hardware samplers. We can't get away from it. That's just a fact. Some people do use hardware samplers specifically for the sound in the sense that they impart a particular texture or granularity or character to them. I have to say that isn't really why I do it. Uh, there are certain machines that give a certain flavour but I'm not going to be chasing that particular 90s sound with an S1000 or whatever other people are doing. For me I just like the workflow and the process and to be honest I think that the latest or at least the last kind of rack mount samplers from Akai aren't particularly known for having a distinct sound anyway. They're quite clean, they just pass everything through and so folks that are searching for a gritty sound aren't looking at the S6000 so that's worth saying up front. For me it's more about the workflow and I'm deliberately saying that because I know people hate that word by the way. So the second question that you might have if you watch this channel is well why have you bought another hardware rack mount sampler because you've already got an Akai S2000 and you've done some videos on it and yes that is true I do have an S2000 I do love it there's something about that and the wee jog wheel and everything that I just really enjoy. I got it a couple of years ago or a year ago can't really remember I got it really cheap it was about hundred and something pounds with about eight output boards on it or eight output uh, output I guess I should say. I have done a bunch of videos on it already including one importantly which talks about how I got it circuit bent so that it can kind of mash up different samples that are in the RAM. So you can throw a drum beat in there or throw anything really and it will really really crunch it up and fuck it up. And for that reason, uh, you know that reason alone I should say, I'm not going to sell it because for me the S2000 has become this kind of very particular unique circuit bent effects box if you will. Now the reason that I am not just sticking with the S2000 and I've decided to get the S6000 is that when it comes to using it for creating big key groups where I want to use lots of different sounds that are programmed and mapped to different keys or notes or whatever, it's a bit of a pain in the arse to program. Using that wee tiny screen and trying to go through the various pages and the menus when you want to do something quickly is not really all that enjoyable or particularly efficient. Now I don't mind that when it comes to certain kind of aspects of creativity when I want to explore the S2000 I'm perfectly happy doing that. However if I want to just sit down and have a whole bunch of samples to access quickly at once then the S2000 doesn't really fit that bill and I've been looking for something that would. As a final kind of point worth noting, the S2000 does not accept WAV files. So even though I've got a USB stick in there pretending to be a bunch of different floppy disks, I do not have the ability to just drag and drop WAV files onto the USB stick. Now there's a whole host of weird and wonderful vintage hardware samplers available, including those that have got particularly interesting in esoteric workflows. So people might be wondering at this point why I decided to buy the S6000 specifically, particularly when it's not exactly the cheapest of all of them 
little options available. The reason that I picked the S6000 in particular, quite simply, is because of the feature set. This is a powerful machine that came out at the kind of tail end of the golden era of hardware samplers, and so it has the maximum kind of amount of RAM that you're going to find in one of these things, something like 256 megabytes, which doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, it is when it comes to this kind of, you know, sampling device. In addition to that, it has also got 128 polyphonic voices, which is wild, especially when you kind of stack that up against some of the modern samplers you find, where you can only really get 8 or 16 simultaneous voices at once. 128 is just, it's, that is impressive. As I mentioned earlier, the S6000 can read WAV files so long as you convert them to 16-bit at the maximum. That's similar to the MPC2500. And this means that you can use something like a SCSI to SD device so that you can use your SD card and quickly and easily transfer samples from your computer onto the S6000 and use them on the device as you would anything else. You don't have to fight, in theory at least, with kind of proprietary file formats or anything like that. One of the main reasons that I bought the S6000 though and one of the things things I love about it is that it has got 16 assignable mix outputs which means that you can route programs or anything else to those individual outputs, run them into different hardware effects boxes, process them differently or just run them direct into your interface into different channels and even on something like my S2000 I've only got 8 outputs, my MPC 2500's only got 8 outputs, having 16 outputs is wild and I don't know any kind of modern hardware sampling device or really any kind of groove box that has got that much in the way of analog outputs is really quite exciting. In addition to the 16 analog outputs, it's also got an optical connection, which means you can hook it up to an interface that supports an expansion, like an ADAT expansion, and you can, in theory, just run all of those outputs over a digital connection, a single toss link cable, and have it in your DAW as easy as that without having to worry about analog patch cables or anything. The final thing that I really love about the S6000, though, and which really pushed me to get this over any other hardware sampler, including the S5000, which is very similar, is that this has got a detachable screen. So on the front, where all the controls are and where the nice big lovely screen is, you can effectively just take that off and have it as a kind of remote control unit. So if you have your Akai 6000 living in a rack underneath your desk, you can then just get the screen, pull it up onto your desk and work away from wherever is most convenient. And I think it supports a cable length of up to 30 meters, which is kind of wild, but that was the, the final deciding factor for me because it means that I can have this basically anywhere in the studio. I can just sneak the cable around the table and use it as I please, which is particularly important because I don't have a huge amount of space left. The other thing about the screen which is really important actually to mention is the fact that there are loads and loads of buttons on there and this is in stark contrast to the S2000 where you have to use that tiny wee screen and single line display in order to do everything. This makes everything so much easier to kind of program and create on. At least in theory, that's what I'm hoping anyway. So that's some of the features of the S6000 that I like in contrast to other hardware samplers and why I decided to buy this one. But I do have a particular use case in mind and that is when I'm sitting at my desk and I'm using my Hapax from Squarp Instruments to control my different synthesizers. So whether that's the OB6 or my modular system or whatever else, I've found that I'm really missing having the banks of kind of drum samples there because even though analog drum synthesizers can sound really nice, I, I kind of create better when I've got the away the 909 you know all of those kind of sounds at my fingertips and I found that there isn't really a hardware box out there that allows you to quickly and easily switch between banks of samples that also has those different separate analog outputs. The closest thing I could find was the TRAS from Roland that is a newer device but it isn't really set up to handle samples in that way and I hadn't really read great things about how it was implemented and so I decided to go back to the old rack mount samplers for this purpose. At the moment I'm in the process of setting the S6000 up, finding space for it in the studio, getting all the cables connected and all that kind of thing. I've got it apart at the moment so that I can install a Zulu SCSI board instead of the zip drive that it came with so that I can, as I mentioned, just use an SD card and hopefully in theory just transfer all of my samples on there and be able to get access to them quickly. However that's been a wee bit more tricky than I anticipated so I'm probably going to do a video to follow up on this and explain how I got everything 
everything working in the end in case anyone else is in a similar boat. If you are somebody that still uses an S6000 or even an S5000, I'd be curious to hear from you because there's not a huge amount of resources out there for people that are still making music in a kind of modern context with these. I'd be interested to hear your particular use cases and your experience, not least if you're using the Zulu SCSI or whatever, because there are some particular idiosyncrasies there. And I mean, maybe you can teach me what the fuck I'm doing as well while we're at it. Hopefully this works out, otherwise I've got yet another giant metal box that will sit in the corner of my room and I'll never be able to get rid of and it'll just take up more and more space. Will I improve my music? Probably not. Do I care? No. <laughs>